who was George Herbert Mead. George Herbert Mead, 1863-1931, was a philosopher, social theorist, and reformer whom John Dewey, 1859-1952, described as a seminal mind of the first order. Dewey brought him to the University of Chicago when he accepted his position there. Mead had been raised in a New England Puritan community. But in his mature thought he became an empiricist. Mead's most important contribution to both. Pragmatic theories of education and sociology was his idea of symbolic interaction. He offered an explanation of the development of the human mind and self. Through the development of language and role-playing. Although something of a behaviorist in his insistence on the social nature of individual mental development. Mead also believed that there were different developmental stages of adjustment to the external environment. Mead worked with Dewey in the Chicago Laboratory School and was a friend of Jane Addams. 1860-1935, and a close observer of her work at Hull House. What was Anaxagoras' idea about the mind? Anaxagoras of Clazoene, c. 500 to 428 BCE, believed that the first cause of motion was mind, which is separate from everything else. Mind created the things in the world by starting a vortex in which different kinds of matter separated out. Who was Nelson Goodman? Nelson Goodman 1906 to 1998, criticized the idea that similarity existed in the world independently of our linguistic inclinations. Goodman was educated at Harvard, was an art dealer in Boston from 1929 to 1941, and became a Harvard professor in 1968. In his The Structure of Appearance, 1951, he developed Rudolf Carnap's 1891-1970 insights about the logical structure of the world. Later, he came to the conclusion that there are many different world structures. Depending on the perspectives of observers. In fact, Fiction and Forecast, 1954, Goodman extended his argument that structure in nature depends on our interests with his famous Gru example. Did Rousseau support a free society? Not exactly. Like Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, he held that structure and government authority are necessary to safeguard individual freedoms. Once they have entered into the social contract, citizens retain sovereignty. But the general will, or what is good for the community, is enacted by legislators into laws. This general will, or communal good, 
may at times be opposed to what is simply good for the majority. Rousseau's proposal for the ideal society was thus focused on the end or goal of that society. He thought that direct democracy was usually the best means for achieving that end in small societies. But in larger societies representative democracy, or even monarchy, would be more appropriate. Rousseau also advocated some form of state religion that would be binding on all citizens and require their participation for the sake of social coherence and stability. Who was Boethius? Boethius, Anicius Manlius Severinus, c. 480 c. 525, was the most famous Christian Neoplatonist in the West. He wrote extensively on the Trinity and produced many influential translations of commentaries on Aristotle, as well as works on education, science, and philosophy. His focus on logic later became a preoccupation with methods of thought among scholastic philosophers. In his commentary on Porphyry, 233-309, Boethius set up the problem of universals. Based on conflicts between the ideas of Plato and Aristotle, which was to preoccupy scholastic thinkers between 1000 and 1150. What was the reaction of pre-Socratic philosophers to Parmenides' monism? Several philosophers after Parmenides felt he was oversimplifying things and offered more complex explanations of the nature of reality. Although these attempts did not always convince their contemporary audiences, they were greatly appreciated later on in the history of philosophy. What was Empedocles' idea about the four elements the Sicilian poet philosopher Empedocles? C 495 to 435 BCE posited the four element theory, fire Air, water, and earth are the four things from which everything else is made. Ordinary things like cats and rivers are but temporary recombinations of these elements. Also, the source of motion for these elements is love and strife. Love bringing them together, strife separating them. What were Wollstonecraft's theoretical innovations? Mary Wollstonecraft developed the arguments of the 17th century anonymous writer who said in an essay in defense of the female sex, the usurpation of man, and the tyranny of custom, here in England especially, that women had the traits they did because of the role society assigned them. However, Wollstonecraft stopped short of condemning men for this or claiming that women were superior or equal to men in character or strength. Wollstonecraft's general contribution to political and social theory was twofold. First, in the case of women, she offered a detailed analysis of how their customary upbringing and assigned roles in society caused them to develop those traits that were 
considered natural to the female sex, emotionality, submissiveness, impulsiveness, vanity. Second, she pursued the assumption that reason could be used to improve human happiness. In both of her major works, she assumed that it was the obligation of rational people of both sexes to endorse social progress and human equality. Wollstonecraft's progressiveness was focused on the life conditions of those who were disadvantaged and oppressed. Which was not the case with leading male. Political philosophers in the 17th century, or even during the Enlightenment. In that sense, she was a revolutionary thinker. What is the Bright's movement? The Bright's movement is committed to promoting public understanding and acknowledgement of the naturalistic worldview. Chicago biology teacher Paul Geisert and Manga Futrell. An educator who is also a board of directors member of the American Humanist Association and a former president of atheists and other free thinkers. Founded it in 2003. Futrell defined a bright as an individual whose worldview is naturalistic, free from supernatural and mystical elements. The Bright's Movement motto is illuminating and elevating the naturalistic worldview. The organization has three major aims, promote public awareness of the naturalistic worldview. Achieve recognition that individuals who hold this worldview can behave in principled ways in important civic matters. And educate all members of society to recognize and accept the participation of brights. What ideals for scientists did the early Royal Society promote? After a rejection of Aristotelian ideals of certainty in scientific knowledge, members of the Royal Society sought what was no more than probably true. Their ideals included open mindedness, cooperation, and goodwill toward colleagues. It was as important to know what one did not know as assert what one did. Here is how Thomas Spratt, in his 1667 History of the Royal Society, described the virtues of a virtuoso, the natural philosopher is to begin where the moral ends. It is requested that he who goes about such an undertaking, should first know himself. Should be well practiced in all the modest, humble, friendly virtues should be willing to be taught and to give way to the judgment of others and I dare boldly say that a plain industrious man so prepared is more likely to make a good philosopher than all the high earnest insulting wits who can neither bear partnership nor opposition for certainly such men, whose minds are so soft, so yielding, so complying, so large, are in a far better way than the bold and haughty assertors, they will pass by nothing, by which they may learn. They will be always ready to receive, and communicate observations, they will not contemn the fruits of others' diligence. They will rejoice to see mankind benefited, whether it be by themselves, or others.
What are some key events for which Socrates is often remembered? Although Plato imports the character of Socrates into almost all of his dialogues, the early dialogues are considered to present a more accurate picture of the historical Socrates, who left no writings of his own. At one time, Socrates studied natural philosophy with Archelaus, who was a pupil of Anaxagoras. C 500 to 428 BCE. But by the time he took up philosophy in earnest, Socrates' main interests were in ethics. Unlike many Athenians, he claimed not to understand how ethics derived from religion. In Plato's Euthyphro, Socrates encounters the eponymous priest on the way to his own trial and asks him what piety is. Euthyphro responds that piety is what the gods love. Socrates asks him if piety is good because the gods love it, or if the gods love it because it is good. If something is good because the gods love it, then we need to know which gods to follow, because the gods often disagree. But if the gods love something because it is already good, then there must be a standard of goodness, or in this case, piety, which is separate from the gods. That means that the gods are not in themselves the source of morality. Euthyphro, of course, has no answer to this dilemma, and scurries away from Socrates. In the Apology, Socrates taunts and baits the young prosecutor Melodus. In a display of dialectic that is exactly what he is on trial for. He relates how he began talking to the experts in the arts and government to seek wisdom. But found that apart from their high birth, wealth, or respected positions, these experts knew less than he. Socrates swears that he has always served Athens. First as a soldier and then as a citizen concerned for the virtue of its youth. He avows his own belief in the approved gods and denies that he ever tried to introduce new gods. The jury of 450 convict him with a majority of 30. Socrates has the right to make an alternative proposal to the death sentence. Voluntary exile would be an appropriate alternative, but instead Socrates suggests that he be given free meals in the Pertineum for the rest of his life, in place of some charioteer. The charioteers were champion chariot drivers who had high status as popular heroes, as well as athletes. The charioteers, Socrates says, only make people feel good, while he directly attends to their well-being. He also proposes first a fine of one mina, and then, at the insistence of his friends. 30 mini, still an absurdly small sum against a sentence of death. The court is not moved by Socrates' counter-proposal and the death sentence stands. In the introduction to Plato's Republic, Socrates sets up the purpose of this utopian work. By talking to a group of friends about the nature of justice. Here, Thrasymachus says that justice is whatever serves those in power. Socrates follows with a description of the psychology of a just person. But this does not answer the question of what justice itself is. Socrates then suggests that justice in individuals is difficult to define. 
but that insofar as the state is the individual writ large. It might be easier to understand what makes a state just and answer the question in that way. The Republic proper is Plato's description of a just state. What were Voltaire's main contributions to philosophy? In his letters concerning the English nation, 1734, published as part of his philosophical letters. Voltaire introduced a French audience to the ideas of John Locke, 1632-1704, and Isaac Newton, 1643-1727. At the same time, he offered political criticism of the ancient regime which was to motivate the French Revolution. Against Blaise Pascal, 1623-1662, who in the previous century had counseled quietism and claimed that suffering on earth was excellent preparation for heaven. Voltaire argued for the betterment of human life in the here and now. Voltaire's letter on Mr. Locke in his Philosophical Dictionary took up a possibility raised by Locke of matter being able to think. However, later in life, he retreated to a skeptical position on such materialism after it was taken up by the philosophes in defense of atheism. What is Kepler famous for? Based on the principle that causes needed to be sought for observed planetary motions. Both regular and exceptional, Johannes Kepler, 1571-1630. Posited both a force between planets and the Sun and also a force to propel the planets. Isaac Newton, 1643 to 1727, was to show that a principle of inertia could be used instead of the force to propel the planets. Kepler's most famous contribution was the discovery that the planets moved in elliptical rather than circular orbits. Which of the other Enlightenment thinkers were most directly relevant to philosophy? Among the other Enlightenment thinkers of note in the area of philosophy is Mary Wollstonecraft. 1759-1797, the mother of Frankenstein novelist Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. She contributed the foundations for feminist thought. Her husband was anarchist and political philosopher William Godwin. 1756 to 1836, known for his determinist utilitarianism. The French philosophes, particularly the encyclopedists, contributed radical ideas about society and government. Voltaire, François Marie Arouet, 1694 to 1778 brought key philosophical ideas to a wider audience. Enlightenment thought in general had a powerful effect on the American colonies and the establishing principles of the United States of America. Who was Friedrich Nietzsche?
Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, was a brilliant philosophical iconoclast whose devastatingly direct critical writing style might in itself have qualified him as an existentialist. More substantively, though, was how he developed critiques of bourgeois culture, Christianity, empirical reason. An altruistic morality from the standpoint of a protesting individual who was grander, smarter, more creative. And in odd ways for a much later readership, hipper than those who championed accepted values of the time. While Dostoevsky and others had criticized modernity in the hope of a return to more conservative religious values. Nietzsche looked ahead to coming generations who would use science as an art to transcend the dreariness of Western history. Who was Augusta Comte? Isadora Marie Augusta Francois Xavier Comte 1798-1857, was famous and influential in his day as a sociologist, and even coined the word sociology. He was the first Western sociologist. Comte has also endured as the founder of positivism. Cohn taught mathematics for a while at L'Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, where he himself was educated. Although mental illness to the extent of psychotic episodes that required hospitalization interfered with his work. His condition stabilized enough for him to complete his major work during a marriage that ended in divorce. After the woman he loved in a subsequent platonic relationship died. He formulated his mission to create a new religion of humanity. Cohn published Course de Philosophie Positive. Course in Positive Philosophy, in six volumes from 1830 to 1832. What do we know for sure about Plato's life? Although Plato, 427 to 347 B. C. E., is perhaps the most influential and highly revered philosopher in the Western tradition. And thousands of philosophical careers have been based on his ideas, little is known about his life, with certainty. This is partly because there was a convention in Plato's time that philosophers writing about their contemporaries not mention them by name. Nevertheless, there is agreement on some broad facts about Plato's life. Plato, for instance, was present at Socrates' trial and began his own philosophical works about 15 or 20 years later. Plato was the scion of a politically well-placed, rich aristocratic family who were anti-democrats. At first, Plato envisioned a political career for himself. But after the Democrats gained power and Socrates was sentenced to death, he prudently avoided politics. Plato served in military campaigns in the war against Sparta and was probably in the cavalry. In the 380s BCE, he traveled to Egypt and Syracuse in Sicily. Plato went to Syracuse three times as guest of the tyrant Dionysius the Elder. 
and then of his son Dionysius the Younger. Both father and son were thought to be interested in Plato's ideas about government. But the results of Plato's involvement in Sicilian statecraft are usually referred to as disastrous. Plato never married, and when he died at the age of 81 he was relatively poor. How did Charles Hartshorne's system of the universe work? All human sensations, according to Hartshorne, are feelings, and nature itself is the totality of all interactions of sentient. Creative beings, which exist for all time in God's memory. The entire universe is literally God's body. The most important values which can be sensed and are immortal as events of sensation concern beauty. Beauty can be theoretically understood as a mean between order and disorder and slash or simplicity and complexity. What were the main ideas of the pre-Socratics? Thales, c. 624 c. 545 BCE, Anaximander, c. 610 to 545 BCE, and Anaximenes. C 580 to 500 BCE, who were all from the city of Miletus. Thought that the natural world was made up of one kind of material, such as water, the unbounded, or air. The unbounded probably meant something like what we mean by something that is infinite. Pythagoras thought that everything was made up of number. This did not mean that everything was based on mathematics, as we might think. But rather that numbers themselves were real things that existed in everything else that existed. Heraclitus C 540 to 480 BCE, noted that the world and things in it are constantly in flux. And he claimed that change was more important than what the world was made up of. Parmenids. C 515 to 450 BCE, on the other hand, thought that change requires that things come into existence from non being. And for that reason, he believed that change was not possible or real. Heraclitus and other Milesians held that the real stuff or substance that makes up the world cannot change. So that to account for change there has to be a number of substances making up the world. Empedocles C 495 to 435 BCE, built on this idea to posit the four elements, earth, wind, water and fire. Anaxagoras, c. 500-428 BCE, thought there were more than four basic elements perhaps as many as an infinite number. Democritus. c. 460-371 BCE, posited that everything is made up of atoms. Who were the principal sophists? Where were many more sophists in the changing Greek society of the 5th century B. CE than during other periods. Based on ancient secondary sources, 
the main ones, whose home base was in Athens. Were, Gorgias of Leontini, c. 485-380 BCE, Protagoras of Abdera, c. 490-420 BCE, Hippias of Elis. C 460 C 400 BCE, Prodicus of CEOs, C 465 to 415 BCE, and Thrasymachus, C 459 to 400 BCE. What was the debate between the Feronian and academic skeptics? Pyrrhonian skepticism was founded by Aenocytomus in the early 1st century B. C. E. Aenocytomus claimed to be merely passing on the thoughts of Pharaoh of Elis, c. 315 to 255 BCE. Sextus Empiricus, 160 to 210 CE, preserved Pyrrhonian skepticism in the 2nd century after Aenocytomus. Pyrrhonian skeptics thought that the academic skeptics went too far in claiming that nothing could be truly known for certain. The Pyrrhonians preferred to suspend judgment on whether anything could be known. They held that suspending judgment led to ataraxiapias of mind in which there was Simply no concern for what may or may not lie behind appearances or come after them. Pharaonian skeptics were opposed to dogmatism and believed that their chief philosophic opponents were the Stoics. What was C? I. Lewis form of pragmatism? Lewis believed that all knowledge about the world, even simple perceptual truths, is hypothetical, taking the form of if I do X, then Y will result. For example, to say that the wall is hard means that I will have a certain sensation if I bang my head against it, just as the claim that the peach is ripe means that if I bite into it, I will experience certain expected flavors. In ethics, Lewis believed that value judgments are appraisals of the consequences of action. Aesthetic valuation, however, involves an apprehension of an objective qualitative mode of experience. Lewis, like John Dewey, 1859-1952, believed that values are in the world as objective qualities, and not the result of human preferences or judgments. According to Lewis, every experience has both a value dimension, according to where it is on a scale from good to bad. And an aesthetic dimension from pleasing to unpleasant, or of high to low aesthetic quality. In both ethics and aesthetics, some things can be seen to be intrinsically good, upon reflection. And in ethics, the aim and purpose of action is often what is intrinsically good. What reforms did Cesar Beccaria advocate? Cesare Beccaria, 1738-1794, wrote on Crimes and Punishments, 1764, which was influential against the idea that punishment serves retribution. 
he reasoned that the purpose of imprisonment was the protection of society and the reform of criminals. Beccaria's book is believed to have been influential in the abolition of torture and maiming as routine criminal punishments by the mid-19th century. What are Venn diagrams? British philosopher and logician John Venn, 1834-1923, invented the system of logic diagrams named after him, which consisted of the overlapping circles. They can be used to test and demonstrate the validity of inferences. Venn diagrams illustrate collections of sets and their relationships to each other which are useful in logic theory. A Venn diagram of sets A, B, and C. Where one or more sets overlap, it means that they have members in common. It can be seen by the overlapping in this diagram that some things are A, B, and C. Some things are A and B, some things are B and C, and some things are A and C. What were Newton's laws? Newton, 1642-1727, is famous for three laws of motion and the universal law of gravitation, as follows. Every body continues in rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless an external force compels a change. This is the law of inertia. A change in motion is proportional to the force impressed and occurs in the direction of the straight line in which the force is impressed. F equals ma, or force equals mass multiplied by acceleration. To every action there is an opposite and equal reaction. Newton's general law of gravity stated that every particle of matter in the universe attracts every other particle of matter with a force that varies directly as the product of their masses and varies inversely as the square of the distance between the particles. What are the Pyrrhonic tropes? They were what the skeptics took to be typical subjects of knowledge about which people disagreed. What was Ayn Rand's virtue of selfishness? Rand believed that the highest human good was individual happiness, which is achieved through rationality. Every individual has an elevated duty to further his or her own self-interest. And others do not have a right to demand that one sacrifice oneself or one's interests simply because they are weaker or in need. In this sense, Rand was an ethical egoist. What were the emotional conditions in Søren Kierkegaard's life? Kierkegaard's father, Michael, was a very gloomy man who had married a former maid as a second wife. 
he felt himself under a cloud of God's wrath and expected punishment through his children predeceasing him five of them did. The sins of Kierkegaard's father apparently consisted of his having impregnated his wife before they were married and in cursing God during severe weather as a ten-year-old shepherd. He later became well off as a wool merchant. Kierkegaard was sickly as a boy, but he could reduce larger boys to tears with his sarcasm and mockery. At the University of Copenhagen, he did not find Hegelianism congenial because it did not address a truth. Which is true for me, to find the idea for which I can live and die. The religion of Lutheranism did not speak to him, either. And for a while he indulged in expensive food and drink and wore fashionable clothes. Because he believed that immediate pleasure was the most important thing. But his father's despair haunted him and became his own. Kierkegaard was intending to become a pastor when he became engaged to Regine Olsen in 1841 he had met her when she was 14, three years earlier, and they were deeply in love. But Kierkegaard broke off the engagement, and she subsequently married her tutor. Frederick Schlegel, who became governor of the Danish West Indies. An original life's path was taking shape for Kierkegaard. And when he decided not to marry he also decided not to become a Lutheran pastor. Kierkegaard believed that philosophy was neither about system building nor analysis. But rather the expression of individual existence. He had no respect for professors because he did not think there was any way they could comprehend his subjectivity. Kierkegaard's most important works were all written in the 1840s, either slash or, a fragment of life. 1843, Fear and Trembling, 1843, The Concept of Dread, 1844, Philosophical Fragments. 1844, Concluding Unscientific Postscript, 1846, and The Sickness Unto Death, 1849. His autobiographical writings and journals shed considerable light on his personal thoughts and feelings. Nonetheless, it was not his intention to disclose everything. He wrote, after my death no one will find among my papers a single explanation as to what really filled my life. That is my consolation, no one will find the words which explain everything and which often made what the world would call a trifle into an event of tremendous importance to me. And what I look upon as something insignificant when I take away the secret gloss which explains it all. When Kierkegaard was near death he refused a pastor's sacrament, remarking. Pastors are royal officials, royal officials have nothing to do with Christianity. His epitaph read, as he had requested, that individual. How did Prodicus make his living? Prodicus, B. 460b.c.e, a sophist, was an ambassador for his home city of CEOs. He traveled widely and became rich from his exhibitions. 
one of his specialties was distinguishing between synonyms. And Socrates claimed in Plato's Protagoras and Meno to have been his student. Prodicus had two versions of his talks, the one drachma lecture and the fifty drachma lecture. Socrates joked that he would have been more learned about words if he'd been able to afford the fifty drachma lecture. The one drachma lecture had much larger audiences, but, according to Aristotle, Prodicus sometimes gave the larger audiences a bargain by slipping in the 50 drachma lecture for them. If Aristotle's story is true, scholarly commentators have overlooked the possibility that the sophists invented modern sales techniques. Who was Avicenna? Avicenna, 980-1037, was a Persian physician and commentator on Aristotle. He was born near Bokhara, which was then the capital of the Samanid dynasty. Located in present-day Uzbekistan. By the age of 10, he had mastery of the Churan and Arabic grammar and literature. By 16, he was highly knowledgeable about natural science, metaphysics, and theories of medicine. He also treated the sick and helped the Samanid prince Nut Ibn Mansur, 976-997. His reward for that was access to the prince's library. Avicenna became an expert on the writings of Aristotle, wrote extensive commentaries, and also produced many treatises of his own on science, religion, and philosophy. His medical encyclopedia, Al Shifa, The Healing, was based on Aristotle's work, and his Al Kanun Fitab. The canon of medicine, written when he was 21, became famous throughout the Middle East and Europe. As an Aristotelian interpreter, he was well known for claiming that the universality of our ideas is a product of the mind. He was not a complete nominalist about universals, however, because he thought that there were differences and similarities among things of the same kind, which existed independently of thought. The products of thought were the formal qualities of things. This doctrine, known as intellectus informis agit universalitatum, neatly corresponded with Aristotle's claim that scientific knowledge consisted in truths about forms or essences. However, although Avicenna's interpretation of Aristotle seemed to be rather state and unoriginal, his claim that it could be reconciled with Islam was soon challenged by Al Ghazali, 1058-1111. And in the generation after that, it was radically revised, along with Al Ghazali's objections, by Averroes, c. 1126-c. 1198. What was logical atomism? The main claim of logical atomists was that the world is made up of logical facts. These logical facts are like atoms because they can't be divided into smaller facts. Single logical facts can be combined by truth functional logic into molecular facts. To apply the theory of logical atomism to more complex statements. 
such as the claims of science, the method of logical construction was posited. In logical construction, any S represents a logical construction of PS if statements about S can be reduced to atomic statements about PS. For example, a salad is a logical construction of its ingredients. And perceptions of ordinary objects are logical constructions of sense data. Bertrand Russell, 1872 to 1970, and Ludwig Wittgenstein, 1889 to 1951, were the main proponents of this perspective. Why did Søren Kierkegaard believe Friedrich Hegel did not write to him? First of all, Kierkegaard did not take seriously Friedrich Hegel's 1770-1831 claim to have written the system of everything. Kierkegaard thought that everything could be viewed as a system by God. But that no human thinker, who is himself incomplete, could have such a perspective. He also rejected the tradition on which Hegel built that. Posits intellectual doubt as the beginning of philosophy. Kierkegaard thought that the beginning of philosophy was wonder. Also, he didn't think that real doubt could be solved intellectually, but that it required an act of will. Finally, Kierkegaard did not think that God or the Absolute could be imminent in the world. Because God is instead the ultimate other, defying rational understanding. Kierkegaard's biggest complaint about Hegel was that he was like a man who had built a palace but lived outside it in a miserable hovel. He meant by this that in constructing his grand and elaborate system, Hegel had neglected his own immediate existence as a concrete individual. What was anti-Aristotelianism? Anti-Aristotelianism was a reaction against the ways in which medieval interpretations of Aristotle, 384-322b CE, had for centuries been accepted unquestioningly by Catholic scholars. Who was Henri Bergson? Henry Bergson, 1859 to 1941, was professor at the Collège de France and winner of the 1927 Nobel Prize for Literature. He is most famous for his time and free will. 1889, in which he argued that objective measurable time, which can be divided into equal segments, is not the same as real time, which we experience directly. In Matter and Memory, 1896, he offered a mind body theory consistent with his later work on evolution in which he argued that a creative urge, rather than Darwinian natural selection, is what causes evolution. In an introduction to metaphysics, 1903, he provided further support for his theory of time. 
In Creative Evolution, 1907, he claimed that a life force is necessary to explain evolution. And in Two Sources of Morality and Religion, 1935, he claimed that there are two kinds of society. One free and allowing for reform and creativity, the other stagnant, conservative, and repressive. Who was Max Weber? Max Weber, 1864-1920, held chairs at the universities at Freiburg, Heidelberg, and Munich. Although what biographers refer to as a nervous ailment curtailed his career as an academic. His main project was to understand the dominant features of modern life in its Western development. His most famous work was The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, 1904. What was Herbert Spencer like as a person? Spencer was a sickly child and received homeschooling from his father and his uncle. A strict dissenting Protestant clergyman. Once, at a social event, someone asked the uncle why his nephew wasn't dancing. No Spencer ever dances, he answered. Mary Ann Evans. The novelist better known by her pen name, George Eliot, had a warm friendship with Spencer. Although he did not enjoy public places and entertainment, he took her to restaurants and the opera. Biographers believe that Eliot would have married Spencer, if he'd asked her, but he never did. She said that the life of this philosopher like that of the great Immanuel Kant, offers little material for the narrator. After First Principles of a New System of Philosophy, 1880, was published. Spencer developed an illness that led to insomnia and self-medication with opium. He became very reclusive and would sometimes wear ear plug so that he did not have to listen to what others said. Although he advocated for public causes such as the metric system and against the Boer War, he spent his last years with very little human interaction. What is the connection between philosophy of mind and philosophy of language in analytic philosophy? Their development has been intertwined since the end of the behaviorist explanation of language learning. The new field of cognitive science, which arose from Noam Chomsky's, 1929. Philosophical treatment of linguistics that disproved behaviorism, shows how philosophy of language is connected to philosophy of mind. When Chomsky proved that language learning required innate linguistic capacities, the whole tabula rasa or blank slate theory of mind came tumbling down. How did Leibniz define his principles? Leibniz based his philosophy on the following principles. 
the principle of identity this is the law of necessary truth and non-contradiction. A is A and never not A. The opposite of a necessary truth is a contradiction. The principle of the best A contingent truth can have an opposite that is not a contradiction. God, who is perfectly wise, good, and powerful did not have to create the world. But he chose to do so and because he chose it, it is the best possible world. The principle of sufficient reason everything that exists or occurs must have a reason that was sufficient to bring it about. Metaphysically necessary principles Leibniz had a number of these, which included Everything possible demands to exist and it will exist unless prevented, activity is essential to substance. And states of things remain unless or until there is a reason for them to change. Principles of order These consisted of three laws of order, the law of continuity. The law that every action involves a reaction, and the law that cause and effect are equal. Efficient and final causation Efficient causes are what immediately make things happen. Whereas final causes are the ends or goals of higher substances. The entire realm of efficient causation is designed to serve the realm of final causation. Principle of the natural everything that God allows to exist and happen. He chooses from what is natural, otherwise he would constantly be performing miracles. What is natural is always in between what is essential or necessary and what is accidental. What was Immanuel Kant's proof of God's existence? Kant rejected the ontological argument on the ground that existence is not a quality or characteristic of things. According to Kant, we cannot say that the sweater is red, wool, and it exists. He rejected the first cause argument as partly relying on the ontological argument. And he rejected the argument from design on the grounds that, at best, it proves only an architect or designer of the universe, and not a creator. Kant himself thought there was a moral proof for God's existence because the moral agent knows that he cannot achieve his goals on his own without God. The resulting belief in God becomes a matter of individual personal conviction not it is morally certain that there is a God, but I am morally certain that there is a God. What did Aristotle think about government and politics? Aristotle believed that human beings are social by nature. So the right form of government is necessary to support happy and self-sufficient citizens. He posited three main forms of government, each of which could degenerate. Monarchy that could fall into tyranny, aristocracy that could fall into oligarchy. Rule by a few based on wealth, and polity that could fall into democracy. Like Plato, Aristotle viewed democracy as mob rule because the great masses of people in their day were uneducated and unrefined. Aristotle thought that the best form of government was polity, a kind of democratic rule within an aristocratic class. 
where turns were taken for top positions and all of the privileged members had their say. Who was Herbert Marcuse? Herbert Marcuse, 1898 to 1979, generally inspired left-wing thought in the United States after he was exiled from Germany in 1933. He was, for example, African American political activist Angela Davis dissertation advisor, and Abby Hoffman, one of the radical founders of the New Left, studied with him as well. Marcuse's primary theme was that philosophy is necessary to combat political oppression. He drew on Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, and Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, to criticize Marxism for its underlying Enlightenment faith in reason. He thought that Western democracies, as well as communist regimes, used scientific methods to deprive people of freedom through mass education and the trivialization of culture into entertainment. His major theme was the ways in which political repression was mirrored in psychosexual repression. His main works include Reason and Revolution, 1941, Eros and Civilization. 1955, One Dimensional Man, 1964, and Critique of Pure Tolerance, 1969. What was 19th century intuitionism? To some extent all philosophical systems have a place for intuition. Direct knowledge that is non-inferential or cannot be proved by prior argument and for which there is no way to resolve doubts. Mill thought that William Wools, 1794-1866, philosophy of science was intuitive. Although it was in places quite inferential. However, Wool did have an explicitly intuitionist moral theory. Other noteworthy 19th century intuitionists were William Hamilton, F. H. Bradley, Henry Sidgwick, James Martineau, and, toward the end of the century and into the next, Henry Bergson. What are the Socratic paradoxes? Socrates provided resolutions to claims that appeared to contradict common sense. Here are two examples. Paradox 1, no one desires evil but many have evil goals or are bad themselves. This is because those who pursue evil do not know that it is evil. That is, the source of evil is ignorance. Paradox 2, it is better to be the victim of injustice than the perpetrator. This is because being just is a primary virtue and a quality of all of the other virtues. Attaining virtue is the main purpose of life, as well as a path to happiness. Happiness as the result of being just is thus an inner matter that is independent of external circumstances. How were Friedrich Schelling's views of culture aesthetic?
Schelling believed that history is a drama that will be resolved when the Absolute discloses itself. God is an artist, the universe is artwork. The main value of religion lies not in its morality, but in its beauty. What was Peter Lombard's contribution to medieval philosophy? Peter Lombard, c. 1095-1160, was an Italian theologian who wrote the Book of Sentences. He was educated in Bologna, Reims, and Paris, and he taught at Notre Dame. Becoming a canon there from 1144 to 1145. What was Alfred North Whitehead's process philosophy? Whitehead believed that it is impossible to have an idea of simple spatial or temporal location. He claimed that in our immediate experience nothing possesses this character of simple location. Instead, Whitehead held that simple location requires a process of constructive abstraction that is made up of considerations of existing volumes extended over one another. Such as a nest of baskets, Russian dolls, or pots of different sizes. Every location has an aspect of itself in every other location and thereby mirrors the entire world. It's unlikely that Whitehead meant literally mirrors. So much as he wanted to emphasize that things are not completely self-contained or isolated from other things. Moreover, what we imagine to be objects are actually constructed events and processes. Process, not substance, is the basic unit of the world. The work of philosophy is to explain the relations or connections between scientific and logical descriptions of reality and our everyday experience, of nested volumes. To believe that science directly describes experience is to commit the fallacy of misplaced concreteness. How did Johannes Kepler's career develop? Kepler, 1571-1630, studied astronomy and was prepared to become a Lutheran minister. When he was appointed a mathematician at the University of Graz. At that time, Mathematics included both astronomy and astrology. In 1596 he published the Mysterium Cosmographium, which was the first comprehensive work on astronomy that was based on the Copernican system. At the time, Graz was dominated by Catholics. And Kepler had to flee on religious grounds, because he was a Protestant. He went to Prague, where Tycho Ubra, 1546-1601, the famous observational astronomer, had an observatory. Kepler composed a defense of Bra's observations against Nicolaus Ursus, who had attacked them as mere hypothesis. Kepler also claimed that, in addition to merely selecting the Ptolemaic or Copernican system. Independent physical explanations are necessary. Using Tycho's observational data, 
Kepler then began work on the orbit of Mars. After Tycho who died, Kepler was given his position as imperial mathematician. And also complete access to all of Tycho who's data. In 1609 Kepler published a new astronomy based on causes or a physics of the sky. Kepler then had to leave Prague for the same reasons he had fled Graz. After he went to Linz, his research included music, theology, and philosophy, in addition to mathematics, which included astronomy. In his 1612 Epitome Astronomy a Copericani he again emphasized the importance of causal explanation as well as observational predictions, in studies of the movements of the planets. His 1618 Harmonia Mundi was the final expression of this thought. He said of this work, it can wait a century for a reader. As God himself has waited 6,000 years for a witness. Kepler was not the last great astronomer to believe he had special information about God. Isaac Newton's, 1643-1727, work was to take the same high tone. Is Hegel's system purely abstract? Very abstract thinking is necessary to understand Hegel's system. But the system itself is presented by him as a literal account of reality. Categories are at the outset literally embedded in physical nature, which expresses them. Space expresses a lower category of being. Whereas living organisms embody and express the higher categories of concept, purpose, and life. Thus, the development of the system of thought is evident in the development of the real world. Except that thought, or the absolute, is the ultimately real actualizing and defining principle of everything that exists. Why was René Descartes' idea of substance a problem for the empiricists? According to Descartes, substance was known to the mind, but not through the senses. The empiricists wanted to build knowledge up from information we get through the senses. How else has Boethius been influential long after his death? Erethius, 480 C. 525, is best known for his Stoic Neoplatonic text, The Consolation of Philosophy which he wrote while in prison after having been accused of conspiring with Justinian to overthrow Theodoric. This text was influential throughout the Middle Ages and beyond. It was translated into Anglo-Saxon, German, and French by 1300, and it inspired the writers Dante, Boccaccio, and Chaucer, as well as many, many others. In the Consolation of Philosophy Boethius defined God as eternal and the complete and perfect sum total of never-ending life. The created universe had no beginning or end, but existed in time. 
Boethius resolved the contradiction between the fact that God knows everything and the fact that man has free will by claiming that God has a simultaneous understanding of everything that happens in time, including human freedom.